Hello guys, I am in Washington Square and I am heading to the Bitter End Club that opened its doors more than 60 years ago. I'm going to see Terry Tao and celebrate her memoirs, My Greenwich Village, Dave, Bob and Me. It's going to be an evening of the stories of the village folk scene that change the music and the social politics forever. I became a socialist when I was in college. I believed that everybody in the world should have uh, food and shelter and education. And later I realized that there was health care. And I became very committed to that. And uh, in my second year of college, I wandered into the old left, which was not the Communist Party, but it was um, a socialist organ. It was the socialist left, and um, it was through that that I heard more folk music. And uh, actually, I didn't meet Dave through that. I met him at an anarchist party, an anarchist science fiction party, uh, up in one of those incredible apartments on the other side of the road. There was this guy sitting on a bench all by himself, playing his Gibson guitar, singing at the top of his lungs all by himself, St. James Infirmary. And it was like, Oh my God, who is this guy? So I had to talk to him, and we became friends, and I remember we walked from there over to a loft that he lived in, which Terry can talk about also. Uh, he lived on a loft way over, we walked down Canal Street, I remember, all the way east near the bridge, and um, spent a great afternoon together. We were friends after that. Far away across these wide blue mountains, one fun day, I loved entertaining. People came up. Uh, uh, we would sit and get stoned. Uh, we would talk about socialism. Dave and I would talk about socialism. Nobody else cared. Nobody else cared. <laughs> yeah, they weren't interested. They really weren't interested. I think it's a bit easier now, given what both our countries, I still live in Britain, unfortunately, and you here, <laughs> have been through over the last few years. You know, we, we, we are still in difficult times. Um, it's a little bit easier now than it was, perhaps, to imagine the deprivations and the claustrophobia of the 1950s and 60s. It was restricted. There were boxes, and you lived in your boxes, and you sat in your boxes. Um, I did not like the box of being restricted as a woman. My sister and I heard endlessly from our mother um, that it was regrettable that we were girls. She wished we weren't girls. And sometimes it was really hard to understand why, because she didn't object to having girls. It was that you had an easier was, life as a guy. It was that you were screwed. If you were a girl, you were screwed. You were gonna grow up to be a woman. You were gonna be screwed. You couldn't do anything. I had a thing about, this is not gonna happen to me. I am not going to live my life like that. I am going to be an independent person, and uh, I'm not going to get trapped. And to a certain, ex certain limited extent, I think I was able to do that. I never carried his goddamn guitar. <laughs> this chaplainist way of falling off a stool, of scratching his head, of moving his cap, and smiling cutely. He really was, he was an incredibly talented performer. He was not a great guitarist. 
he was not a he was not a great singer, but he was a talented performer. He he really was. And um, we became friends. From the Cliff did this, like wow, I've been a public relations person, I've been an editor, I've been a wife, I've been a girlfriend, I've been a mistress, I ain't never been a bloody author on stage. Thank you, Tom, Happy, Terry, The Bitter End, Paul Redstone, who's always very patient with me, and the publishers, and David Andram, artist of heritage. Thank you for all my kids for going to lead us out. He was a man.